the top ranking Latino at the NYPD resigns abruptly. This while the department continues to deal with a rise in crime, some unrest, and is also now bracing for more protests as we head into the election season. Police Commissioner Dermot Shea certainly has been busy. He is joining me live this morning to weigh in on all of these issues. So good morning to you, Commissioner. Thank you for making the time this morning. Uh, thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. So I want to get to this, this story that broke yesterday. Chief of Patrol Fausto Pichardo abruptly resigning following some clashes, I guess, with Mayor de Blasio. Those clashes, as we've been reporting, followed a missed phone call from the mayor after Mr. Pichardo worked a 36-hour shift responding to the Borough Park protest. So I have to ask, were you aware of the tension that the chief was getting into with the mayor and that he was, in fact, considering resigning? No, I'll tell you, uh, I had a conversation yesterday with Fausto and uh, very, it would be putting it mildly that I was surprised that he's leaving and, and more so, Dan, because of just uh, how well respected he is, what a bright future he has, yeah. uh, no matter what he does. So I was certainly uh, surprised. I mean, on the one hand, I'm dealing with losing a tremendous uh, asset to this department. I'm torn because I'm also happy for him if, if this is what he chooses to do. Um, you know, I wish him nothing but the best for him, his family. So it's it's bittersweet. I mean, Fausto is uh, he's an NYPD success story. He came on the job mm -hmm. um, as a cadet, rose through the ranks very rapidly and and has really excelled at every job he's ever held. So, you know, that's that's what we're grappling with right now. I mean, we have a deep bench and we'll, we'll just put the call out and it'll yep. be next man or next woman up. Um, I have no doubt about that, but a uh, very bittersweet morning because uh, he, he's a friend, he's a close colleague, and he's going to be missed. Yeah, he's been on our air a few times and he was well respected among the 17,000 uniform officers oh, yeah. that he oversaw. Any comment, though, that there was, in fact, this clash between Fausto Pichardo and the mayor and can you talk about whether or not the fact that the mayor maybe was meddling in some of the affairs of the NYPD? No, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. I mean, certainly this, this, this is the police department of the mayor. The mayor is free to, to reach out and uh, talk to people, obviously, whenever he sees fit. Uh, I, I don't know, honestly, when you, you'd have to talk to Fausto. I mean, it, it's been a tough year for everyone, mm -hmm. certainly in the police department as well as in throughout New York City. It's been a real stressful year, a lot of time away from family. Um, you know, it, all of those things probably came together at this moment in time. But, uh, you know, I think the important thing is here to uh, to move forward um, in terms of Fausto. Man, it is a tremendous, yeah. tremendous loss. And let me tell you. Understood. OK, Commissioner, I want to talk about yeah. another thing that unfolded last night. And there was this forum. I don't know if you heard about it with seven Democratic candidates running for mayor last night, all said they would oust you from the top cop post if elected next November. I wanted to give you the chance to respond to that. It's good to see that I have finally succeeded in uniting New Yorkers, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that they could come into your agreement with that. Uh, obviously, I'm kidding, but, uh, you know, that's about as much thought as I give that, Dan. It's yeah. too important. The politics in this city is humorous at times, but... I'll leave it at that. And I know you don't usually want to get into the po political world and the political arena, but I have to ask, do you even want the job through the next election? This job? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this is, uh, it is, I, I, it's hard to put into words what an honor holding this position is um, for the people of New York City, uh, for the people, the men and women on this job, past and present, just it is such an honor. I said it when I was sworn in and I feel it today. And, mm -hmm. and you have such an ability in this job um, to affect people's lives, right. to do the right thing, to keep the city moving forward. And, and that's what I hear from New Yorkers every day. So, uh, you know, I, I did get a kick out of the article. Uh, a couple right. of people sent it to me. But beyond that, um, that's about all I have to say. All right. I want to get into some issues right now affecting New Yorkers, right? COVID cases on the rise across the city, especially in Brooklyn, where protests got violent, ended with the arrest of uh, Heshi Tischler. And I want to ask you this. Has the NYPD increased patrols in COVID clustered neighborhoods? And how are you actually enforcing restrictions in these areas where we're seeing an uptick? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough balance when you when you talk about, you know, um, You've heard from the mayor. You've heard from the governor as well. I mean, this is a real uh, important issue, and we don't want to go backwards in terms of New York City. It's been 
you know, an in interesting six or seven months and no one, I think we are all united in this. Mm -hmm. No one wants to go backwards and we want to keep moving towards a New York City that is open. Um, everything from right Broadway plays to schools fully open to, to, you know, wouldn't it be nice to go see a baseball or a football game? So I, we got to treat this seriously and we are absolutely treating it seriously here in the NYPD. We've incre increased the numbers of officers where we can, Dan. But we, yeah. remember, we're also down thousands of officers. And, you know, we, we had the city council voting to defund us not a couple months ago. So at a time when crime is rising right, uh, in terms of violence and dealing with the, the, the overtime issues and the headcount issues, but nothing yeah. is more important to us than human yeah. life. Uh, we are out there um, not only in Borough Park, parts of Queens, but really all over the city and trying to balance all the things on our plate. Right. So I want to I want to get into the enforcement then because they in, in specifically Borough Park, because allegations have surfaced that the NYPD was told to be hands off when it comes to Jewish neighborhoods and that protesters were, I guess, treated differently when you look at it at face value in the videos during the Black Lives Matter protests. Right. When you look at the the fires that were set on the street in Borough Park the other day, there were no arrests. But then you go back to May, June, when there were plenty of arrests. So I want to ask you about the disparity in those two situations there. Yeah, I, I, I would disagree with the disparity and also that any any allegation that we were hands off in a particular neighborhood. It's at the core of what we do to keep New Yorkers safe, all New Yorkers. Um, certainly when you look at protests or individual incidents, you mentioned the fires, Dan, any property damage um, individuals, personal property, to businesses, to cars, to physical assault. All of that is where it crosses the line uh, to us. We want to respect the right of people to but peacefully But there was, I'm sorry to interrupt and, you, sir, there was a physical yep. assault. There was that journalist in Borough Park who was assaulted yep. in the middle of that protest. Right. And, and an arrest was made, just as an arrest was made um, in the Occupy movement in front of City Hall when a number of uh, it's very disturbing, and I know that uh, people in the media are upset, and rightfully so, that we've had a number of incidents of journalists either uh, property mm -hmm. damaged or assaults. And we are full speed ahead in terms of detectives uh, under Rodney Harrison to make arrests in all those cases where we can. So I would point to, I could point to multiple incidents, and, and DCPI can give you the details, yeah. where... Uh, a crime occurred against a member of the media and an arrest was made, including this case in Borough Park. And because what we're seeing unfolding on the streets right now, there was an internal memo that, that leaked to the media the other day with, in regards to political protests moving into the election season. So I have to ask you what the NYPD is doing surrounding the yeah. upcoming presidential elections. Have you been tracking, I guess, also at the same time, hate groups that may want to come to New York and incite violence during the elections that we may have seen in years past? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And, um, you know, Tom Galati and the Intelligence Bureau, John Miller, our deputy commissioner, um, we are certainly tracking and, and coordinating with other law enforcement across the country um, in terms of what they are seeing as well, because sometimes, you know, the world is shrinking. Um, but whether you're talking about political protests, Dan, mm -hmm. or hate groups, we in this day and age, oh, unfortunately, you have to be uh, cognizant and aware of all of all of that and, and plan for the worst. I think that's what we're trying to do here. You know, you referenced the, me the, the memo. I mean, look at the last four years. And certainly, you know, I could talk about last election with four years ago, and we thought the election would be over and we'd move past it. And it really, I would argue it's never really uh, ended the, 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 um, the yeah. conflict, if you will, right. that we've dealt with. And it's certainly coming to a head right now. And, and we just want to make sure on the NYPD side that we're ready for any and all eventualities. Understood. Uh, I think that's my job as the commissioner to make sure we are. So we're training up. We're going to have people uh, assigned with the greatest flexibility, uh, people in uniform ready to go in the period leading up to the election. And mm -hmm. hopefully, Dan, hopefully it's all a waste of time and we'll just yeah. all move on. We're almost out of time, sir. And, and you just referenced training. And, and you and I have always talked about reform the last couple of times you've been on here. And it's been a priority since the summer, right? Changing the culture of the department requires a lot of retraining from top to bottom. And, and I'm listening yeah. to you talk about the disparities between Borough Park and the Black Lives Matter movement. And I think transparency is key here because people are listening to that saying, well, they just don't believe it, right? 
So you're having this listening tour as well to kind of hear from the communities. So I want to ask you both about the listening tour, what you hope to accomplish from it, and when will retraining begin if it hasn't already? Well, the training, uh, you know, I could hear Ben Tucker in my ears, and I'm kidding, but training never ends. And, and Ben is a staunch believer of that and has done a great job uh, the last seven years. There's been sweeping changes in our training, but we're not satisfied. And it never ends, and we continue to look for the best available to how do we get to the next level and how do we get better. The listening tour, Dan, is starts tonight. It starts in Staten Island. You can go to NYPD News and, and check it out. You can view it remotely. We're going to hit uh, at least eight different locations in the next couple weeks. But then there's a series of meetings beyond that. So this is just to start. And, and we're going to try to call together a cross section of New York City. Uh, every race, religion, and creed, people that agree with the police, people that want to see changes to the police, clergy, elected officials, good old-fashioned New Yorkers, and everything in between. To We want to hear people. And, and that's what we've tried to do in the recent years with neighborhood policing. Certainly, this is an extension of that, but it's an opportunity to really for New Yorkers to voice their concerns about law enforcement, about the criminal justice system, and hopefully even beyond that, and how do we all move forward together. Understood. Commissioner Shea, thanks for joining us this morning. I do welcome you back during that listening tour because I want to hear from you during it. So can you promise to come back? Absolutely, Dan. All right, sir. I would do love appreciate to. it.